Hello, hello! I'm gonna draw something in Hexos today, specifically an environment, because these are fun to draw in this program. If you haven't heard of Hexos, it's a grid-based illustration program. This is the launcher, the thumbnails are various options for new documents. Most of the time, I just click on the first one, which is the Trixel grid, and it sets up this new document. On the Documents panel, I change the default black background into white. This panel also contains settings for the grid's color and opacity. There are a couple of ways to import reference images. Method 1 is to go to the File menu and Import Image. I imported the sketch that I drew beforehand. From these import options, the first one imports without rescaling the image, while the second and third allows you to adjust the scale factor. It shows a preview already, so you can base that factor on how many triangles you want in a shape. The second import method is to simply drag the image onto the document. This can be moved and resized with the Layer Transform tool. As you can see, compared to importing the image, dragging it in won't convert the image into triangles. So use this if you prefer an undistorted reference image. The sketch will be my top layer, so I adjusted the opacity via the slider at the bottom of the layers panel. Before I go willy-nilly with drawing, let me demo the grid types. The Trixel grid is the default grid. It can draw simple cubes, so Minecraft-like landscapes can be drawn with just this grid. While the icons are self-explanatory, I also use the ramp right and ramp left grids whenever I need their diagonal lines. The Trixel grid has 30 degree lines, while the ramps have 60 degree diagonals. Ramp forward is pretty much the Trixel grid, but has horizontal lines. If I ever need an honest to god horizontal line, I switch to the ramp forward grid. The shards grid combines all the angles from the previous grids. This creates the tiniest triangles, which are good for details. Sideways Trixels, as the name suggests, is the sideways version of the first Trixel grid. While the first grid creates vertical cube poles, this one can create horizontal cube bars. This is the titular hexels. It's the Trixel grid without the subdivisions, so we're left with a honeycomb pattern. If there's a sideways Trixel grid, there's a sideways hexel too. Xels is a square grid subdivided by two 45 degree lines. I usually just switch between the first five grids, depending on which angle I need. Alright, back to the sketch. From the view menu, I brought out the floating color picker for quick access to the pickings of color. It can be dragged around, moved out of the way, and it even saves my color history under the hue circle. There are two buttons for creating new layers. The highlighted button creates the typical hexa layer that primarily uses the grids. Meanwhile, the button to its left, the one with three squares, creates a pixel layer. The pixel layer can still use grids, but it has more brush options, like traditional media brush tips. I won't use that type of layer on this video though. Once I outline the shape, I use the fill tool to do what its name implies. BAM! I started out with grey tones, but I'm not gonna worry about the values this early on. Actually, I realized the white of the reference image was getting in the way, so I accessed the layer settings via this cog at the bottom. Under Blending, I switched the mode to Multiply. Here's another familiar function. Layers can be grouped by selecting the layers and hitting the folder icon on the Layers panel. The cliff is asking for some straight lines. I blocked it out with the Trixel grid, then switched to the Ramp Forward grid to slice horizontally. The details within the cliff can use this shape as a clipping mask. That's this circular button on the bottom of the Layers panel. Most of the buttons and functions should sound familiar if you're used to other art programs. Even a program like Affinity Designer can set up Trixel grids. The fun of drawing with hexels, however, is the constraints of the grids. Drawing on a grid challenges artists to create geometric works that are impressionistic. If you know me, geometric art styles are my favorite, so hexels art just give me an ASMR vibe. The even sizes and alignments subconsciously tease a neatness and order. As someone who draws background layouts, I try to avoid tangents. Like the tip of this grass was touching the shrub above it, so I moved it away, letting it float on white space. 
tangents are inevitable in this program. Gotta sometimes tell my brain, shh, that's part of the charm, just roll with it. Big, medium, small is still a rule that I live by. I couldn't settle having only one type of each asset. There's a big, medium, small rhythm to the split of the waterfalls. There had to be a smaller version of the tree, while a smaller version of the cliff is the rock on the pond. I added some vines to fill the spaces underneath the trees. Each leaf is a tiny triangle. That's all the shapes. It's coloring time. I changed the background to a cool off-white color, but I'll adjust it to a warmer hue later on. For the color scheme, I referred to infrared photography for the pinkish hues on the trees. I first applied the ochre and olive greens on the other plants, but I opted to avoid the predictable greens and yellows instead. The water is a predictable aqua color because it wouldn't look as refreshing otherwise. After the first pass of color, I needed a desaturation layer to check the values. The adjustment layer button is this one. The post effects list is empty, but I can click on this plus button for the options. Hue set is under the adjust category, and I slide that desaturation down to zero. With this effect, I saw that the waterfall, as the desired focal point, needs more contrast with the cliff. I redrew the ripples for a more dynamic arrangement. This is where the outline tool came in. It doesn't act like a brush, but more of a pen tool. If the cursor goes too far from the segment, often to my annoyance, the line will suggest a different, wonkier path. The first segment has these arrow projections that dictate the direction of the line. Getting that right lessens the wonk, but requires precision placement. For precision erasing, the outline tool has an erase mode to get that sucker. The pond could use another layer of complexity, but with the brush tool and the pen pressure set to opacity. As expected, the strokes fade away based on the pen pressure. Excels has a glow setting, which can be toggled by this button on the top right. On the layers panel, the glow slider adjusts the settings for individual layers. I only needed it for the waterfalls and the reflections for an ethereal effect. Under blend mode, the dither mode converts opacity-based fades into dotted fades. The dither is dynamically applied as I painted the rest of the reflections. I was getting somewhere with this effect. How about a gradient? Holding on to the fill tool reveals options like the gradient tool. This is the linear gradient, radial gradient, and near the end, options to fade to the background color or fade to transparent. It's subtle, but the gradient isn't smooth. There might be noticeable triangles based on the active grid. Less noticeable if the fade is wide. But I really like Hexel art styles that show their pronounced triangles. Especially when the grid is minimal. This artist named Etal makes works that look so effortless. I'll share her art on screen and link her gallery in the description. She really knows her way around grids and how to scale them. The triangles are applied so economically and smoothly, but she can still achieve depth. I discovered Texels from her blog, so I thought it was fine to dedicate a bit of time to gush about her. Anyway, back to my art. I was painting more textures, then applied the dither blending. The trees and blue moss have speckles of triangles to emulate how masses of leaves catch light unevenly. The dithering lacked levels though. There were about 6 steps from faded to solid color. To smoothen the effect, I duplicated the texture layer, then removed the dither and set it to a low opacity. I was really happy with how this was turning out. I think I can put this up in my Redbubble store. I don't promote my store often, so I'd like to take this moment to do so. The store contains my other Hexel designs, like Japanese food and antique electronics. Just charming low-poly objects that can be printed as stickers or other Redbubble items. This waterfall might fit a poster or a shower curtain. So check my store link in the description if you'd like to support me financially. Last step on this illustration, I made a background gradient with a temperature that goes from warm to cool. The gradients couldn't fill up the edges of the documents. 
The preview panel shows an overview of the image that will be exported. Using the frame tool, I can select the area that I want to keep. Then the result of the crop will be shown on the preview panel. I turn the pixel grid on with this button from the top right. I have to select a pixel layer to show this grid, which is already the layer type of my reference image. The pixel grid acted as my guide to crop the sides evenly. To save an image, go to File Menu, Export. PNG is the only flat image format. In the Export options, the resolution slider adjusts the scale of the image, but you can specify the height and width too. Now I have a final artwork to roll. Thank you once again for watching. I'm glad I can share this interestingly niche program. Do you think Hexels can fit with your art? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more art videos and tutorials. That would really help, if not for the algorithm, then for my feelings. Bye bye